Good morning. Thank you. Uh, Senator Murkowski does regret that her schedule changed at the last minute, that she was prevented from being here, uh, but I appreciate your tolerance from hearing from just me. Um, Senator Murkowski greatly appreciates NASA's focus on the prosperity that the arts can bring to our rural communities. Um, as Ben alluded to, so much of Alaska is so far beyond rural that we call it frontier. Um, our state capital, as he said, qualifies as rural. Um, and we know that the arts in and of themselves can generate prosperity for these rural communities. Artists selling their paintings or crafts, theaters selling tickets, museums generating visits to nearby restaurants. These are all incredibly important economic drivers. For example, at the Alaska Federation of Native, Natives Conference each October, Native artists selling everything from cuss bucks, traditional clothing, uh, to ivory figures, to gorgeous jewelry are the highlight of the event for many. You can find everything from an affordable Christmas gift to absolutely luxurious works of art. Uh, every time I go, uh, I need to budget for something. Um, <laughs> This is one example of something that a native artist has made in Alaska. Um, I wouldn't like to guess how much money changes hands at AFN art and crafts booths, but I'm positive uh, that it is a significant amount of money. And those dollars go home in many cases to very cash poor communities. Um, but as in my role as an education, agriculture, arts policy staffer, I often see the prosperity that comes from the arts in a way that has nothing to do with the artists earning revenue or ticket sales. For me, prosperity also means the strength of the soul and the heart. In many rural Alaskan villages with no cash economy and more than their share of hopelessness, substance abuse, and suicide, the arts are more than a road to, to prosperity in dollars. They have been a source of empowerment as well as individual and cultural resilience. When our schools partner with elders and the curriculum is culturally relevant, bringing in the arts, whether it's drumming or dancing or carving, we know that the students have better outcomes. And the arts are a big part of that. Schools in Kodiak, Alaska have been infusing the arts into their curriculum for years. Kodiak's main elementary school was one of the very first national blue ribbon schools. Kodiak is a vibrant community that is on the cutting edge of renewable energy. Then there are places like a little village called Quinnegock. I read articles last year about the archaeological digs that have been going on out there. They found the cultural remains of a community that was destroyed by war several hundred years ago. The community worked with Lower 48 and international archaeologists and other scientists to unearth, study, and preserve what they were digging out of the ground before erosion washed the site away. They created a museum right there in Quinnegock because they wanted to bring the scientists to them rather than force Quinnegock residents to fly somewhere else to see what their own ancestors had created. And one of the articles quoted a young man who, as a teenager, had been considering suicide after he broke up with his girlfriend. But when he saw the amazing pieces of art that his ancestors had created, utilitarian and culturally important and beautiful pieces of art, he decided to participate in the project. He's now learning to be an artist himself. He has learned to be resilient and his ancestor's art helped to save his life and make his life an inspiration. In Metlakatla in southeast Alaska, very tiny community cut off from roads and other parts of, of the state, the community and school work hand in hand to make sure the curriculum brings in the arts. Students are creating art in school that could be sold in any high-end gallery and they're taught by the elders who grew up there. And the entire community is healthy. They have worked together to create a prosperous dive fishery that supports many jobs and is an important part of the local community. And I believe that the arts that they have infused into every facet of their lives 
has had something to do with that in Metlakatla as well. These community strength and prosperity may not be directly linked to revenue derived from the arts, but without the arts, they would certainly be poorer. And Senator Murkowski gets that, which is why she's been such a consistent supporter of the, NRA, of the NEA, arts and education, and arts and artists in general. So she would wish me to thank you for your advocacy and your hard work. Thank you. Thank you.